Morning, everybody. Grab a cup of coffee and a donut or three, and let's do some switching. Well, here's the train coming into Chillicothe, coming to Route 23. Should be slowing to a stop here for in a minute to switch wherever. I should be slowing to a stop here pretty soon. He's not slowing for a stop. I think this guy's going to kill. A rainy day here in Central Kentucky. It just started raining again. Don't know if you can hear it. Out on the deck with Jazzy and three cats. Chance is sacked out in the living room. Here comes the train over Grassy Fork. Coming into Oak Hill. Probably be a pretty shot when the scenery is uh, a little bit uh, more completed. So we had to stop and throw the turnout. Go pull the train down the passing siding. Now, the DT and I train has already been through and won't be back uh, till this evening. So, we're going to leave the caboose on the main for a few minutes while we switch uh, Cedar Heights clay. We have three cars at the back of the train. You have two box cars for Davis Fire Brick and an empty gondola for Charrington Scrap. And we're going to leave these here on the passing siding. There's no point in taking those down south um, because they're, we'll switch them on the way back when it'll be a traveling point uh, switch. 
So the two cars right behind the engine, they're going to go down south to Knockin' Sons and Harvest and Walker. Uh, but we've got two cars to deliver to Cedar Heights Clay. And we have the box car and two covered hoppers to pick up. Eventually I'll have, um, I can't decide if I want three car spots or four car spots at Cedar Heights Clay. And all the car spots will take either a box car or a covered hopper, except for spot one, and that's just for box cars. The box car has uh, bags of clay. Raining pretty good now. Hopefully, you can hear it. So the front of the train is actually on the staging yard right now. That was one of the things I didn't like about the design was I basically have to have the staging yard in place in order to switch Cedar Heights unless I'm just switching one car or something. I just I don't have much of a lead, switch lead. Or if I didn't have any cars that are going to the staging yard, you know, I wouldn't need it there, but uh, I'm probably always going to have it have it up there. So what I should do, if I had room, was to leave these three cars I just picked up on the passing siding with the other cars and just pick them up when I come back through. However, due to the compressed natures of model railroading, I would be blocking Route 93 for a couple hours in my end scale. Uh, people would not appreciate that. So I'm gonna have to leave them on the main for now and take them with me going south. Just not enough room on the passing siding between Main Street and Route 93 probably only room for maybe you know five cars it's just another compromise we make on our model railroads overall I'm happy with the design though I, I, I don't know how I could have done it any differently I like the uh, scarcity of track. There's only five turnouts on this module. So now we're going to spot the two covered hoppers. We have to go back and get the uh, three cars we left and then 
push on back and get the caboose too because uh, we're going down the line about five miles we need to take the caboose with us So we're heading south out of town. The next uh, station would be Black Fork Junction. I have a little branch that uh, went off to the town of Black Fork where they had some more brickworks and more clay products down there. And then we hit Knockin' Sons and then Harvest and Walker. So I'm going to put the uh, staging yard, a little video showing how I did the staging on this uh, next, and we'll just end that here for part one. So the train is already parked in the staging yard. So I've got one of those re plastic re-railer uh, things. So I put the engine you know, on the track. You know, they're not going to turn the engine. It's still facing the same way. Um, I pull the two cars off that I'm leaving and put the two cars on that I've got on the shelf uh, on there. And then the three cars I brought with me from Oak Hill, I need to make sure I put them in the same order that they were because there wouldn't be any switching of those cars. So I just put them back in the same order and put the caboose on the back end. Um, and then I can uh, head back north into Oak Hill. So it's pretty simple. It'll never be more than two or three cars down there. And I've got two tracks there. Uh, the other one will be for to hold the DT&I train um, if I want to run a DT&I through train. That's how it works. So I'll post uh, part two, um, you know, coming up pretty soon. Um, hope everybody enjoyed this, and uh, everybody stay safe.